Hello everyone, welcome back to Spooky Month. Uh, I wanted to review an episode of the original Goosebumps TV series from the 90s. I know this is really cheesy today, but when I watched it as a kid, a lot of the episodes scared me. Most of them still do. Uh, let's see. There are some bad episodes, but of course that's with any show. Uh, this is the particular episode called Quick, which is Season 3, Episode 5. And it's one of my favorite episodes. In fact, it's my second favorite episode of Goosebumps. Um, it's actually based on a short story. I believe it's in the book More Tales to Give You Goosebumps, I think. It was in one of the short story collections, and it was uh, based on that short story. Um, and uh, I need to read that short, short story. But the episode's really great. Um, Click is not really scary. Uh, it's definitely more thrilling. Um, it's not really scary at all. Um, I mean, un unless... Well, the ending counts, I guess, as being kind of creepy. Um, there's going to be spoilers for this episode, though, so I'm not, you know, I'm not holding back. There's, there is spoilers. Sorry, there is going to be spoilers in this episode. I did not know how to talk there for a second. So anyway, uh, there is going to be episode or yeah, spoilers for this, the whole thing. So, it's a great episode. It's really great, although it's very dated. Um, you can kind of tell um, a lot of the technology is like VCRs and DVD players and, you know, computers and bad effects. But that's how it was back in the 90s when this show came out. So, this episode is basically about a kid named Seth Gold who is obsessed with comic book junk. He orders all sorts of crap from the back of his comic books, magazines and stuff. His sister, Jamie, she hounds him for it. She's like, Mom's told you to stop ordering this junk. And, she's like, and, he, and then Seth's like, well, it's my money. I can do whatever I want with it. And, yeah, he's a little bit of a brat. A little bit. But, essentially, Seth finds the... A kind of an ad for this universal remote control. And it's called the Verona XG20 Universal Remote Control. And it's made by Armchair Electronics. Remember that name. Because we're going to get back to that. That is a big plot point. Is Armchair Electronics. That's the company that makes this. And it turns out this remote not only controls the TV, it doesn't just control the, you know, stereo or your... Well, they didn't have Alexas back then. But it controls pretty much any tech in the vicinity. However, it also controls their life. So that's the big twist. That's the first big twist. Is that this controller just doesn't control, you know, TVs and VCRs and motion control. It also controls the person's life, which is crazy. And the remote is very creepy. It's it's like this. It runs on these weird, like, supercharged, unlimited batteries. It's really cool. I love this concept. Also, fun fact, the Adam Sandler movie Click, that was based on this episode pretty much, like the story and stuff. Obviously, Sandler being him, his humor came into it a little bit more. But I really love that movie. And this episode is also great. Um, so, Seth gets the remote control. He tries it out. It's pretty funny, the stuff he does when he tries out the remote. He points it at his fish tank and he turns the fish different colors. He goes outside and the neighbor is mowing his lawn. And he turns the remote to the lawnmower and he lowers the noise. And he does that several times. A kid comes by and throws the paper, the morning paper. And he, may, he rewinds it so the kid does it again and again. It's pretty funny. Um, later on at school with his best friend Kevin, uh, he's interested in the remote. Of course, Seth brings the remote to school, which normally is not a good idea because, you know, kids would probably be interested in that. But uh, they go to, you know, recess and they see a bully, one of the, you know, the, the neighborhood bully. 
and he is harassing a young kid. He's like, hey, give me your money now. And Seth points the remote at the bully, and he's like, watch this, Kevin. And then he turns the, press a button, or presses a button, and <laughs> the bully starts turning into different characters from TV shows. Um, again, I don't know a lot, I don't know any of these characters, um, because they're probably from, like, before my time, obviously, but, um, they're probably really funny. It's a really funny sequence. He gets transformed into all these characters, and the, the funniest one is the, the one where he turned into, like, this weird kids show bunny, and he starts, like, acting really dumb, and it's really funny. You gotta see it. It's hilarious, or really cheesy. It's, it's both. Um... But that's funny. The bully eventually gets the hint and leaves the kid alone, finally. And then Seth's like, see, what did I tell you? This thing's magic. <laughs> and Kevin's like, well, that was funny, but uh, let's not use that again. Of course, being a kid in the Goosebumps episode, Seth uses the remote again, this time, to cheat on a pop quiz. So they're having a quiz in class, and uh, the teacher's like, all right, get out your... Uh, your pencils, we're getting the quiz ready. And Seth's like, nope. And he, he pauses reality. And he he walks over, gets the paper, brings it back, cheats on the test, does the test, and then brings it back, and then reverse, and then plays time. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Although, if this happened in real life, this would probably be so devastating. Like, you've seen from, like, Back to the Future, Bill and Ted, The Lego Movie 2, a lot of the time travel stuff does not end well when you try to, like, mess with the time travel stuff, like, the circuits of time, nothing ends right. So if you try to change the past or the future, it's not going to end well for anyone. So maybe that's a good thing that this isn't real technology. But, yeah, I just have a feeling if... If it was real, then people would just, like, abuse it, you know? Like, you know, there's always those people that do that. Like, come on, it's pretty obvious. But, but anyway, um, a really cool thing earlier I forgot to say was that Seth uses the remote the first time he uses it. He turns the TV on to a show called Uh-Oh, which apparently was a show that was big in the 90s when Goosebumps was airing. So that was interesting. It was kind of weird, but kind of funny. But that was a real show, apparently. And uh, he also pauses his sister in time, again, because she's doing her, like, um, ballet, not ballet dancing, her, like, dang it, I forgot the name, like, the, the shoes, the, the ballet shoes kind of thing. I forgot the name of it, but she has, like, um, oh, tap dancing. She's doing the tap dancing routine. You probably remember this. But she's doing, like, the annoying tap dancing on the floor, and he can't hear the TV, so he turns it up louder. And the parents are like, turn it down. And he's like, no, have Jamie turn her, go away. <laughs> have her go away. I can't hear anything. And so he gets so annoyed that he pauses reality itself, and they get paused. Uh, the parents and the sister and the dog, um, and the TV for that matter. So that's very... Um, interesting and dangerous uh so yeah this i do want to point out whenever someone gets paused in reality it's a little funny because the effect is just like a very dated visual effect um which is it that kind of makes it funny but then it kind of doesn't so yeah make of that what you will but anyway after this um the the remote starts to act really weird like, it starts to kind of make these weird noises, like, brr, brr. It's like these weird noises. And eventually, Seth uses the remote so much that the batteries start to malfunction. Like, it starts to go out of, not out of control, but it just doesn't work as well as it used to. So, he goes to the maker of the remote control, Armchair Electronics. I told you they come back in this. I told you. So armchair electronics, they are brought back into the um, into the picture. And also, my favorite part of this episode, besides the ending, is the fact that there is a, a technically a villain, not really, but a man called Tony, and he's played by David Hubend, 
and he is great. He is amazing. The act, this man can act. Um, <laughs> this guy is so unsettling. He's the maker of the remote, and he, uh, like, at different parts of the episode, I think at, I think four different times, Tony shows up on the TV, and he's like, well, I hope you're enjoying this new Verona XG20 Universal Remote Control, but treat it with respect. It is not a toy. And he's, this man is so serious, and he kind of has a bit of comedy, but he's very serious. He gives these warnings to Seth. Don't use the remote for evil. Do not overuse the power. And, you know, just give all these great warnings. You know, don't overuse the batteries. Don't go overboard. And don't be a jerk. And that's essentially what he's saying. And he keeps warning Seth um, that, you know, if he keeps abusing the power, then it'll come back to get him. And it does. It really does. Um, the main, the ending is really creepy. Um, the ending is one of them where the hero doesn't win, which is something that the haunting hour takes up to 11. Like, in Goosebumps episodes, mostly the heroes win, but sometimes they don't in some episodes. But the haunting hour, basically no one wins at the end of any episode, which is even creepier. But essentially, um, Tony warns Seth four times and Seth ignores all of this which is his first mistake the second mistake is abusing the control batteries which is leads to his third mistake of trying to turn against his friend Kevin simply for trying to get the remote away from him he just wants to try the remote and eventually he wants to take it away from Seth because Seth is just using it for everything and at this point the remote starts to act up so much that it just doesn't work at all. And uh, that is where we get the twist ending. But um, the one more thing, they go to ele Armchair Electronics, and it turns out that they have been, uh, I guess, out of business for some time, but for some reason have been able to contact Seth through the TV. Um, it's very ambiguous, which I like that. Because they don't tell you what the company is, what their what other products they've been doing, and Tony just shows up on the TV. But at the end of the episode, um, Seth and Kevin are been, have been arguing about this. Seth tried to throw away the remote because it was acting badly. He tried to fix it. It worked for a minute, but then it started to malfunction again. And so Seth tried to throw it out in the in the trash. But then after Kevin left, he actually got it back out of the trash and started to use it again. At this point, the remote is so evil that it's corrupting his mind. And yeah, that is very um, sketchy. And the remote, it turns out, has been controlling life itself. And so the batteries have now gone out so badly at this point that when Seth tries to turn the power off, it turns his life off. And so he go. this is the other twist ending. So he goes inside the remote and he tries to, he tries to explain, hey, I'm just trying to fix it. And Tony shows up in the flesh this time, but he, he turns up only to warn him. He says, we hope you've enjoyed your new remote. And so he goes back into the shadows. And so now Seth is stuck in the remote and it's low battery. And so when the battery goes out, that means you die. So that's the ending of, of Click, which is just so great. Like, it's just, there's a lot of buildup. It's just great to see the final um, pieces of the puzzle come together. Like, you're watching it. It's fun at the beginning. It's just dumb, fun. And then it just gets more and more creepy as it goes along, which is great. It's like that subtle creepiness that Goosebumps does well, at least with most of his episodes. Um, so it's not a scary episode. It's just intense. Like, the atmosphere is very, like, it's very, um, uh, what's the word? It just spirals out of control. So that's great. And the anticipation is, um, a really great, it makes the ending really great. And, um, that's it. The episode ends. Seth is like, wait, wait. 
it's just a little battery. I need new batteries. And then the episode ends. Boom. End. That's it. So, man, I love this episode. I think I'll probably do a couple um, videos later on discussing Seth's character and um, Tony, especially, because he's a great villain. He's only seen very... He's only he's not seen very much, but when he is, he really steals the episode, in my opinion. So click my second favorite episode. My first favorite is Attack of the Mutant, for a number of reasons. Um, but I love this one. I'd give it a 10 out of 10. The atmosphere is great, although it is dated. It is very dated. But that's what makes Goosebumps so great, is the effects and the time that it was made and stuff like that. But what do you guys think of the episode? Click. Have you seen the movie? Have you seen this episode? What do you think? Let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching this. And um, sorry if it was a little bit longer, but I wanted to get through everything. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. More Goosebumps episode reviews are coming pretty soon. I have another one that's coming out soon. That'll be my favorite review or my favorite episode. Um, so that'll be fun. But I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and uh, stay tuned for more. Have a great day.